everybody. Welcome to Pivotal Cloud Foundry or uh, PCF Monitoring Webinar. I'm Gordon from Vacant. Thank you for joining Kamala Dasika, Pontus Ridden, Christoph Dimitrov, and me. In this webinar, we will talk about what SREs, PCF operators, and developers need to know for better PCF monitoring. This includes tips and live demos on how to troubleshoot faster across the stack and improve application performance. I will start with a brief overview of the agenda of today's webinar. First, Kamala will give a short introduction into PCF webinar and uh, uh, actually PCF and benefits of using Pivotal application services or PaaS. Kamala works in Pivotal production, uh, product team focusing on uh, cloud platform and the ecosystem at Pivotal, more specifically Pivotal Cloud Foundry. Then I will talk about the challenges of monitoring applications on PCF and benefits of using Wavefront for monitoring your path. Through the live demo, Pontus, uh, Technology Evangelism Director at Wavefront with an extensive background in software development and application management, will show you how to see all the telemetry in one place in Wavefront from applications to the PC platform and the underlying infrastructure. After Pontus, Christo, uh, our customer, PCF and Wavefront user, who leads Skylum platform engineering team, will demo how his team is using Wavefront for monitoring their applications running on PCF and enable them to meet their goals of rapid release cycles, production stability, and performance at scale. And in the end, we will have time to answer your questions, point you to PCF and Wavefront resources, and where to start your free PCF and Wavefront trial. You will also learn how to benefit from a webinar giveaway and schedule a 30-minute call with Wavefront to discuss your PCF use case. Kamala, please dive into what and why of PCF. Thanks, Gordana. Uh, so, for audience who don't know Pivotal, we've been at the center of a lot of enterprise digital transformation. And we're seeing that teams are moving uh, to a continuous integration, continuous delivery centric world using new architecture patterns like microservices and cloud native applications. Uh, these changes in their application architecture, uh, their team design, delivery patterns, uh, all of these things allow them to ship software more frequently, change and update the features to adapt to customer requirements and security, all of this. Now, this comprehensive shift in the model for application delivery is what the industry is calling cloud native. Um, and you, know, you can kind of think of cloud native as an advanced combination of DevOps, microservices, uh, and continuous delivery, all of which is practiced together with the goal of shipping more resilient software, but also faster. Now, Cloud Native really started out with uh, born in the cloud companies like Netflix, and it's gotten almost buzzword status now. So does this actually have any benefit? And it, you, whenever we have questions like that, I think it's best to look at some third-party research on this. So the 2018 uh, State of DevOps survey shows some clear advantages on this front. So when done right, groups that have adopted these practice and code 46 times more frequently, they're going thousands of times faster than before from commit to deploy, and the change failure rate is seven times lower. And they're able to recover from incidents that they do have uh, thousands of times faster. So clearly there are huge benefits in terms of speed, throughput, uh, and also stability. So the same report explains that achieving the cloud characteristics required to be an elite performer like this is easier through uh, implementing a, a platform as a service or a cloud native platform to provide a better service to application developers. So this way, the DevOps teams don't have to manage or control the underlying cloud infrastructure, the operating systems or storage, but just need to control the deployed application and maybe do some configuration on the uh, application hosting environment via the platform. Now, this is where uh, something like Pivotal Cloud Foundry, a cloud data platform like Pivotal Cloud Foundry would come in. So the whole experience of the platform is designed to securely accelerate the path to production for the developer's code. 
there's a lot of flexibility around how this would work on multiple fronts. So first, the PCF, uh, which I'm going to shorten for Pivotal Cloud Foundry, uh, abstracts the underlying cloud infrastructure so that the developer and the operator's experience remain the same across clouds. And uh, when a developer writes their code once, they can deploy it on multiple clouds. Next, um, the developer can actually bring a cloud-ready containerized application to run on our enterprise-grade Kubernetes platform, uh, Pivotal Container Service, or PKS, and that could be, uh, and that application could essentially be a legacy monolithic app that's been modified slightly to take advantage of the cloud native platform, or essentially deploy uh, 12 or 15 factor applications or microservices to PAS, shown here on the left, which goes further to be developer friendly. Now, PAS just takes your code and figures out what kind of code you pushed, whether it's Java or .NET. Um, and it builds the container, and it provisions the runtime resources needed to uh, deploy your application. Now, you can use the marketplace, shown here on the right, to find and access the pre-built integrations, like Spring Cloud Services, that help manage these deployed microservices in production, or you can use it for third-party services like uh, you, you would need for CICD, um, uh, security scanners, uh, performance monitoring, including platforms like Wavefront. So when your code is in production is actually when the fun is going to start. So uh, if you have any CDEs, the platform will actually make it really easy for you to patch uh, and, and update using Canary or Bluegreen deploys without the end user experiencing application downtime. It can automatically scale the application instances up or down based on the custom rules. And it updates the load balancers, routing rules. So it's actually doing quite a bit that can otherwise consume an entire operation team uh, under normal circumstances. Now, what all these conveniences mean is that there's a lot going on within the platform and infrastructure that an operator needs to know and reason about and really needs a different kind of a platform uh, monitoring system. Now, luckily for us, uh, we have uh, a lot of observability capabilities that are built into the platform that allow us to aggregate and expose the logs and metrics outside of PCS uh, from both the platform components and applications. And tools like Wavefront do an awesome job of figuring this out. So, Gordana, do you want to take us forward from here? Yes. Thank you, Kamala. Kamala covered the benefits of running your application on PCS. And to maximize these benefits, SREs, PCS operators, and developers meet with challenges related to abundance and complexity of PCS data. There are actually too many data. Let me name the primary challenges. The major benefit of running your application on PCF is better application efficiency. However, monitoring overall health and performance is more complex and uh, require the right visibility into all layers. Layers such as PCF components, containers, applications, and related services. Now, DevOps teams want to identify and address issues before they impact end users. For that, monitoring KPIs relevant for application performance visibility and understanding is crucial. Next, as Kamala has mentioned, PCF support, uh, supports continuous delivery and horizontal scaling that enables rapid development. Yet, due to shortening release cycles, DevOps teams are facing an explosion of metrics that they have to analyze quickly. Without the right monitoring tool with powerful analytics that can scale and keep up with the dynamism of PC app components, this explosion of metrics could lead to long triaging. And finally, lack of monitoring tool that can enable effective communication between developers and platform teams can lead to finger pointing and long MTTR. As you can see on this slide, past observability requires different kind of monitoring. Monitoring that can give you insights into your application and platform performance so that you can troubleshoot faster. Vacant with over 200 integrations is just such tool. Let me go over some of the vapor differentiators. First, real-time end-to-end visibility. 
you get out-of-the-box visibility into application performance, containers, containers workloads, PC app components, and underlying infrastructure usage. Vapant distributed tracing enables you to visualize request traffic between the application and related services. With this at-glance visibility, you can quickly spot resource usage trends across environments and microservices and uh, further identify dependencies and bottlenecks. Second, the Bayfront cross-layer tags enable correlation between application, PC apps, components, and VMs. And uh, Pontus will show some of this magic in a live demo. This, along with the quick pinpointing of bottlenecks and issue across layers, facilitates faster troubleshooting. And uh, not to forget, powerful analytics-driven alerting that helps you to prevent real-time high-impact incidents. Now, on this diagram, you can see that Vapor monitors applications running on PCF through PCF nozzle and Vapor proxy or Vapor cloud service. You can instrument your code and emit custom metrics using client libraries such as SATD, Micrometer, or Drop Wizard. To identify any infrastructure or resource issue, Vapor can collect host metrics. Besides, Vapor will automatically tag metrics and infrastructure components with attributes from the cloud providers PC app cluster is running on, like GCP or Azure or AWS. This enables grouping and flexible dissecting data that will further speed up your troubleshooting and reduce MTTR. In short, Vapor pass integration with packaged dashboards, alerts, metrics, and events, visualize data across the layers along with out-of-the-box visualization of data stores in one place. And now, let's go shortly over PCF operators and developers' use cases. I will start how VMware IT Ops team use Vapefront. IT Ops team runs uh, several PCF foundations with around 8,000 containers per foundation on vSphere infrastructure. One of the main benefits of PaaS is that it enables continuous application development. To detect cloud resource issues early, PCF operators need continuous visibility at scale into production performance. IT Ops team immediately reaped the benefits of the Wavefront PCF integration. Before using Wavefront, they couldn't visualize data from different foundations in a single view. Now, using Vapor dashboards, they avoid capacity bottlenecks stemming from new code pushes. They also get insight into how many PCF containers can be created based on the overall memory usage. And then they adjust memory to meet the requirements. On this slide, you can see a sample of IT Ops Team PCF Summary Dashboard. This team uh, uses this dashboard daily for overall health Counts. They also use the Diego cell dashboards for CPU views, uh, memory usage tuning, and uh, LRPs management alerting. Through the Vapor PCF integration, they have full visibility into Spring Boot-based microservices <coughs> using Redis, RabbitMQ, and MySQL. And uh, uh, finally, they take advantage of uh, Vapor distributed tracing that enables in-depth troubleshooting of message spans for fast incident resolution. And uh, here is how Vapor helps VMware core development team deliver high quality code. Uh, core development team proactively supports thousands of VMware customers that run their apps on PCF. Before using Vapor, SLAs were monitored manually and reports were created bi-weekly. Developers to understand application behavior and to optimize services started using metrics and distributed tracing. PCF metrics are not instance oriented and they do not provide heap or stack or direct memory segmentation. Also, there is no application JVM specific metric because PCF is container based with no JVM access. So um, developers have instrumented their code with Micrometer IO and they uh, sent application custom metrics to Vapor for uh, visualization, analysis, alerting, and drill down troubleshooting on SLAs. These tools help developers monitor the production environment and uh, fix isolated issues before service degradation. 
This slide shows a sample of Vapron's real-time high granular KPI dashboards that the um, Skyland team uses and uh, that Chris will go in more details in uh, uh, his demo. And Vapron's observability enables developers to deliver high quality code and to speed up daily reporting. And now is time for live demo. Pontus, your time to show our audience how to monitor applications on PCF platform. Great. So while I am figuring this out here, uh, how to share, hang on. I got it. <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead and uh, type it in, and we'll address them later. Sorry about that little, little delay, folks. Uh, my name is Pontus Ryden. I'm the lead evangelist for uh, Wavefront. Uh, so I do a lot of these uh, seminars and webinars and, uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give you a 15-minute uh, overview of uh, what Wavefront is and how it is used in conjunction with uh, uh, with uh, PCF and also, uh, yeah, uh, cloud native applications in general. So, let's see if we can hide that one thing. Yep, so I could. All right. This is Wavefront, right? What Wavefront is, is a uh, metrics based, time series based uh, platform. So, you can view time series like this, and those time series, as Gordana explained so well, can come from pretty much anything, right? So, what we can do is we can have a look at our integrations. So, integrations are all kind of the out-of-the-box data sources that we have. And as you can see, we got our feature data sources, which kind of are the most common ones, right? So you got your, your uh, AWS, you got your Google Platform. You also have, obviously, PCF, because it's awesome. And you have all your other operating systems and things like that. But if we scroll down here, you're going to see myriads of other data sources we can have, such as various cloud data sources, such as databases, uh, you have middleware, you have your DevOps tools, you name it, right? We can consume data for metrics from pretty much anything. And if we can't, then uh, it's about three lines of code to write something that does. It's extremely simple, right? So that's where we excel, to get data from a lot of places and to get it in quickly and to handle really, really big data volumes. And why is that important? Well, look at the tool like uh, PCF, right? Now, PCF brings in just insane amounts of uh, metrics, right? We have hundreds and hundreds of probably even thousands of different metrics coming over the fire hose, right? Which is great because PCF is heavily instrumented. It de delivers a lot of data that we can do a lot of interesting things with. But it also gets overwhelming, just like uh, Gordana pointed out, right? You're kind of drowning in metrics. You can kind of, I think she used the word exploding, and that's really what it is, right? It's a metrics explosion. What am I going to do with all this, right? So obviously, one of the things we do is we have a set of PCF-oriented dashboards, right? By the way, of course, we have vSphere dashboards. We have AWS dashboards. We have dashboards from everything we consume data from. But since we're talking about PCF today, that's where we can start, right? What you're going to see here is a little bit, some, it looks a little bit like HealthWatch, but we go a lot deeper than HealthWatch. And by the way, HealthWatch does a lot of interesting things like running uh, canary deployments and things like that. Of course, we take that data and we consume that and we put that into this model as well, right? So you're not losing anything that HealthWatch does. You, you can continue using HealthWatch and you can even consume those metrics and uh, roll them in here. So here's our kind of overview of our PCF environment. We can see that Diego is doing great. Everything is doing a great, great here. This is a super boring environment uh, because everything works, but that's kind of the way it's supposed to be, right? We can dr drill down into the various types of jobs. We can see how much CPU our Diego cells are taking, how much uh, our Doppler is taking, so on and so forth, right? We can see the top jobs uh, in terms of consuming disk and in terms of consuming uh, various resources. It looks like our Diego cells are really high on that, which is kind of not surprising since that's where the actual applications run. So, yeah, I guess that's a good thing that the applications are consuming all our resources and not a bunch of other things. Now, from here, we can, uh, we can actually make the relationship between the, um, uh, the jobs in PCF and the, the VMs and the hosts that they run on. 
So this is another important aspect of Wavefront, that we can take data across domains that are normally not connected, right? Usually, uh, there isn't really much of a connection uh, between uh, your PCF jobs and your VMs, but we can, we can kind of synthesize those connections. And even when there's no connection at all, we can, we can use correlation to find that. I'm going to show that in a second. I'm just showing this to get you an idea what an overview from um, uh, PCF looks like. We can have another overview, right? This is just, this should be familiar to anyone using PCF. This is basically just stuff that we're pulling out of HealthWatch, right? So if that's what you want to do, that's great. A problem you have with HealthWatch, though, is that uh, HealthWatch only looks at one um, uh, foundation at a time. So if I wanted to synthesize two foundations, I could do that. And yeah, that's what that looks like. Another thing that um, Wavefront gives you is the ability to drill down and drill in really, really quickly, right? So if I was interested in that spike here, I could just do that, and you can see how quickly things uh, it, it loads data. And then I can sync the rest of my dashboard to kind of just be that time frame. So now I can do things like, you know, kind of manually correlate things, looking at things side by side, drilling in. It's a really nice user interface, and you're going to see a lot of that when, when we go through the demo. Why don't we go down into something uh, maybe a little bit more interesting, right? Our PCF containers. Here's where you can see information about, um, see what we have here, about your individual containers and applications running in them. Uh, and the one I know is working here is HealthWatch. So I can see uh, uh, information about my HealthWatch application. I can see how much CPU usage it's taking. I can see the memory usage, the disk usage, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, I can even drill down into uh, there's a different dashboard. I can drill down into the Go router and see um, how the Go router is performing per application, things like that. I can see how many, what the latency in handing out routes are, uh, all, all that good stuff, right? But where this gets really extremely interesting is when you start to correlate uh, across things. I mean. Maybe we should just open one more here because I kind of wanted to see the Go router here, right? So the Go router um, would be here, right? Go router. There it is. So the Go router is interesting because that gives us things like uh, handling latency, right? And you can you can break that down per application. Uh, you can break, break down uh, uh, route registration, memory allocation, things like that per, per route and per application. Um, and I, of course, again here, I could see that in both foundations or I could just pick, pick a single foundation. And as you can see, everything is uh, really super fast. And uh, we, are, we can also, we can consume up to uh, 5 million data points per second, right? So even if you have the biggest um, PCF environment, you can imagine, we can very easily consume all that data. But let's have a look at where it gets really interesting. And that's when you start to looking, uh, look across the entire stack, right? To do things like this. I want to look at my past applications. This is kind of a mashup dashboard that one of our, our um, uh, system engineers built. So this is not out of the box, but he built it really quickly, right? What you can see here is you can see um, uh, based on an application, based on applications, you can see things like um, how many files they have open, the memory usage, live threads, all that kind of good stuff. That's fine. Now, from the application layer, you can start drilling down into the PCF platform layer, and you can see things uh, such as uh, CPU percentages per job, um, all of the various components, how much resources they they consume. Let's go even one level deeper. Now from here, you can go into the virtual machines. In this case, this is a uh, vSphere that's backing this. You can go into the individual virtual machines that are backing this, right? And you can see things like, yeah, I'm, see I'm seeing some spikes here. Maybe that correlates with the spikes I saw in my application performance, those kinds of things, right? Um, what if I wanted to find, let's say I wanted to know what hardware a specific uh, PCF application or a specific job runs on, right? I can actually do that. I can go in here and I can say, hey, I want to know um, this particular deployment. I don't know, HealthWatch maybe. Um, so HealthWatch, uh, the HealthWatch forwarder runs on 
this particular uh, PCF instance. It runs on this particular uh, um, VM. I can go down into all the v uh, everything in the VM layer, troubleshoot it there, and I can go all the way down to the host layer. Right? This is absolutely unique to this um, to the solution. Now you can go across all those layers and, and that easily, right? Um, and you know, people say, "Oh, well, it's PCF. It's a platform, or it's serverless, or whatever people call it, right?" Uh, but at the end of the day, everything runs on infrastructure, and uh, there's a lot of uh, situations I've seen where um, customers benefit a lot from that visibility. But this is still kind of just, eh, it's kind of simplistic, right? What if we could be smart? What if we could do something really smart? What if we could automatically find a problem? And let's just zoom in on something here, this particular little. So you see, I could zoom in on that uh, because that looked interesting, these spikes here. So I'm going to synchronize the time for everything else in here. And that should reload. And if you saw, it took a little time. I'll explain why. So what we're doing here is I found the behavior of one of my applications. The latency spikes up every once in a while. And I'm trying to understand why that is. I have no idea why that could be. I don't know if it's CPU bound, I don't know if it's memory bound, I don't know if it's network bound. So I'm using the correlation functionality in Wavefront. So what correlation does is it basically uh, looks at the, let's say the wave waveform of this, right? The behavior, how this varies up and down, and it correlates that with something else. So here, it's my, my, here are my top candidates for correlation with that. These are the things in my environment that seem to be correlating um, with those spikes. And those are all VMs that are hosting uh, Diego cells. And as you can see, it's all CPU bound correlation. I could see this graphically and I could see, yeah, these are the metrics that correlate with that particular um, behavior, right? So out of hundreds, so we're actually in this case, thousands of metrics, I could find the metrics that had kind of the same kind of spiky behavior. And I could do that across all the layers, from my app all the way through uh, PCF, all the way down to, to the infrastructure. And it did it automatically. That's a very, very key um, benefit of uh, a wavefront, to be able to do those deep correlations. But we can go even farther than that, right? So let's, let's step outside of PCF itself, and let's look into the application. So here's my application. And I'm going to change the time range a little bit here because I want to look at this area here where it spikes up. And I'm going to sync the time here. So here's a situation where I have um, my duration to make uh, to serve a specific request is spiking up, as you can see here. This application is served by a bunch of different nodes here. And it's instrumented, in this case, using Istio. Uh, and as you know, Istio and uh, and uh, PCF are kind of um, tied at the hip. They, they uh, you can you can deploy Istio to, to PCF, and you know you can you can get this kind of um, monitoring and this kind of um, data for your applications. But what I'm looking at here right now is like, yeah, I have this spiking up. I actually got a bunch of new containers spun up here, and they are all kind of uh, slowing me down. I can kind of take a peek at the various microservices that this is calling. So I have a bunch of microservices, and I happen to be monitoring them. So here I can kind of see that, yeah, pricing is probably the candidate. But what I can do is I can go even deeper. Let's do that just for fun, right? I'm going to troubleshoot the service I'm looking at. And I can go in and I can say, hey, yeah, these are the slowest requests that come into my, um, my service. And I want to see if I can break them down into uh, what's going on. And of course, uh, in this case, uh, first of all, I get a map, map of the application. And you can see shopping cost styling, cost pricing. This is super useful because when you're building microservices, it kind of, it, it, it's awesome because you can uh, ship it out to various teams all over the world and they can build it. But also you never have one person that has kind of all the knowledge of the application. To be able to draw that map is cool. But this also allows you to say, hey, here's the bottleneck. Obviously, this is the longest bar, right? Pricing is the microservice that takes the longest. Wow, okay. Can we take it even one step further, you think? Yeah, let's try that. Um, this one. So pricing 
we could see here, I can, I can zoom out a little bit here. Right? Uh, we can see here we have this spike in pricing latency. I'm really interested in that, okay? And I have a feeling, I have a suspicion that this has to do with my database that's underlying this, because this does a bunch of database lookups. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling out all my database statements, and I'm pulling out the uh, time it takes to execute them. And no, that didn't tell me anything, right? Because it's, the, it's a mess. There's a gazillion database statements that have kind of the same, uh, takes kind of the same time. Didn't help me at all. What can I do? Again, I can run my, and it kind of looks better if I zoom out a little bit here. And I maybe make that. Here we go. So what I can do here, I can run my correlation again. These are all the queries that my database is handling right now. It tells me nothing. Now I'm running that correlation, and I'm actually bringing out one single query that is doing some kind of select uh, price from quantity, blah, blah, blah. So that's the, that, that query that correlates with the pricing latency behavior, that is my culprit. You can see it takes 1.3 seconds, and it correlates perfectly with that behavior. Now, what I did here was... I took you on a whirlwind tour, and I wish I had uh, two hours instead of 15 minutes, right? But the point here is that we go across all the layers. You saw us look at PCF. You saw us look from PCF all the way down into the infrastructure. You saw us start way up in the application and look uh, at an application that had a strange behavior, and we could drill down into the specific microservices and their timing. You saw me take that timing information and try to understand it further by using correlation. You saw me take this really messy, ugly, horrible mess of SQL statements and using automated correlation to pull out the one, the one single statement that was actually uh, applicable and actually uh, contributed to this slowdown. So that was what I was trying to show today. Um, if anybody is interested in a one-on-one -on -one discussion, we can set that up. Uh, we're going to talk about that later, I think. Uh, and with that, I will hand it over back to Ristal. Thank you. Okay. So, um, thank you, Pontus. This was really nice and really well outlined all the functionality uh, that Wavefront provides, starting from distributed traces and any kind of metric. So mm -hmm. I'm Christo and uh, Chris Dimitrov and uh, I'm engineering manager for Skyline platform team from VMware. And uh, I'm here to talk about how we use Wavefront and what is our use case uh, and how we also use PCF, of course. And I first let me share with you what is Skyline with few words. So Skyline is a product that aims to provide proactive support for VMware customers. So VMware, by VMware customers, I mean those who use vSphere, um, those who use virtualized vir operations, NSX, uh, Horizon View, etc. So said that we collect really a lot of data from the customer environment infrastructure, software-defined data centers, bring that data home into the cloud and start to analyze that data in different ways. Uh, in here with this demo, I would like to focus solely on one of our components, which is the Roo engine or Roo analysis component. So these are a set of services that are interconnected and aims to execute all that on top of PCF using, of course, Wavefront and Micrometer IO and PCF marketplace services like RabbitMQ and Redis. So we build our applications using Java and, of course, it, in microservice-oriented fashion. So we use um, a lot of best practices like API gateways, um, service discovery, fame clients, and um, a lot of things that are typical for such kind of an environment. So we use two data centers. To, we deploy our, our application in two data centers, which means that we use two different uh, PCF foundations. This uh, basically allow us to go into high availability mode uh, with uh, load balancing and fault tolerance. So if something disastrous happens, we can easily go back even with almost no downtime to the other data center, or we use it as a load balance situation. So you can see that uh, in here, 
I would focus on this Zoo engine, or these are separate instances of um, analysis or components that does the analysis, and they use local cache. So, which is of course local and shared between or within uh, one uh, PCF uh, foundation. And our database is outside PCF, and this is multi node persistent store, and we use it more or less as a service that is provided by other VMware team. And I would not go into details with that team as of now, so it's not the point here. So right now, I would like to a little bit extend uh, while I'm sharing my screen. Um, so I would like to extend this a little bit further for the personas actually who use uh, uh, Wavefront and to whom an engineering team uh, really interacts. It's not only SREs, it's not infrastructure administrators, uh, platform administrators. These also may include PMs. So product managers, project managers, any kind of persona. So, And the charm of uh, Wavefront is really to create dashboards and you can first share dashboards. So as a team, we try to build different kinds of dashboards that, of course, can represent different kinds of data. For example, we define different types of metrics and we look into the metrics from a functional perspective, which tries to cover really on a high level is that functionality or set of interrelated component works as expected. And also we put a lot of technical metrics, which tries to measure latencies, number of requests, number of failures, and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, things that you can correlate between each other and even go into the platform. I will show that. So what you see on this screen is uh, basically related to this rule engine or analysis that we do, components that does the analysis on top of the data. And you can see that currently I'm on a time window of one day and we generate really two types of reports as of now. One is what we consider an inventory type report, which environment topology of the customer environment looks like and which are the interrelated products that customer is using like NSX, VROPS, Horizon View, and all of that, which um, uh, vSphere deployments are running upon. And the operational summary reports is a more sophisticated type of report that is a composition of a lot of rule, approximately, um, depending on the customer tire and the support level, but it's approximately between 1,000, 1,050, and uh, sorry, 100, 150, and 200 rules, separate rules that are executed. So on a functional level, we want to track according to the, our SLA, and our SLA is every day we should generate new, every 12 hours, we should generate new inventory report, and every day we should make a new analysis for our customers on, upon their environment. So we scan for a variety of issues like security issues and um, um, uh, VVD, which is VMware validated design. So if they, if they drift from these best practices, we try to get them back in, et cetera. So what you can see on this dashboard is today we scheduled approximately 5,000 uh, inventory reports and four or once again, approximately four, uh, 5,000 are in state completed, which means that overall our functionality works. And this is quite useful because if you see all that, this, the figures are quite the same, they may differ just because something is being computed really right away or just because this is a, um, a slide window, something may be scheduled outside of your, created outside of your window, but actually computed in your window. So there are some differences. And with regards to the operational summary reports, you can see once again that today we've created approximately 2,000 and approximately 2,000 are in state completed. And for each completed report, we sent a notification on external team. So we have a dependency. So in a service architecture or world, it's you're not working in a silo. You definitely have some dependencies. And these dependencies might be external to your environment, to your PCF foundation, or even somewhere else in other geographical region, etc. So overall functionality works as expected. So you can see that on a high level, it's quite good. So let me drill down uh, from a technical side and let's see how it looks if we have to troubleshoot something in our environment. So we typically troubleshoot when we do a new deployment or when we just release a new version of a certain component. So we make sure that main operational param parameters uh, remain the same. So this is what we refer to as post-deployment monitoring. Of course, we heavily rely on a alerting functionality that we build on top of the metrics now we emit here. So what is important to understand how long a um, computation would take overall is the number of customers, the number of rules, or the depth of the analysis you do. 
So this is why we have a section that represents all that. And this determines more or less how much on what is your data set, how much computation you should do. Because in the end, we have to do correlations. So in here, we also integrated our deployment. So whenever we deploy a new version in one of our components in here, you can see this kind of a um, um, peaks here. So this represents a deployment. And this chart or this time window is a date and a day window, but basically I would like to demo here a service degradation we faced last Thursday due to our new deployment or after our end of one of our services. So you can see that within interval of um, five days of which two days are weekends, Saturday and Sunday, we have approximately seven releases or seven deployments on production environment, which is really good. And uh, this supports what uh, Gordana and Kamala said in the beginning. This really enables us to deploy frequently and being aware of what's happening in this environment. And every, every change you introduce should know how it affects the whole piece, not just in isolation. So what you can do just out of the box using the metrics that are PCF Firehose provides for you is, for example, says your application has, what is the CPU utilization and memory utilization? And um, this is entirely true with P uh, regards to PCF, that PCF monitors this really on um, the container level. So if you use micrometer IO, for example, you can really go deep into the heap, um, the, the stack, the uh, direct memory and number of threads, and you can be really, really uh, yeah, go deep if you want. So said that you can see that on a constant basis, we have 24 workers per data center. So we, this means that we don't use any kind of um, um, autoscaler as of now. So let's go a little bit deeper and try to understand our application latency metrics. So how these reports uh, are computed and how long does it take to do a computation? So first row represents the so-called operational summary report generation. And you can see that these, those are basically uh, happens occasionally. And these are not, these, all reports are not scheduled just at the same time. So we try to uh, distribute this over time so we can better utilize our resources and do not introduce a high peaks in resource utilization. So you can see that on an average, we are close to maybe I don't know, 15 minutes. So these are peaks here. We are really interested in peaks. And what we refer to latency means from creating or scheduling the report, the time this report stays into the queue till, till the time it is really computed. So if you look on the right side, you can, see, you can see just the time for actual computation. So how long does it take to compute an entire report for a customer? And you can see that the scale is in minutes. So we are talking about a minute or something that it takes us to compute the report yeah, fetch all the data, analyze the data, and come up with some kind of results. So this definitely means that uh, stay in the queue is high here, but this also might mean that we have low number of workers. So maybe we have to increase our workers to reduce that kind of latency. So as I said, last Thursday, we made a new release. I'm, we need to calculate this inventory report. And the intent was so to switch from sequential type of analysis to um, um, to parallel type of analysis. So you can analyze the data in parallel. And the intent was really to reduce the time, but actually after the deployment, you can see that the stay of the report in the uh, queue actually increased. So, okay, something definitely was not as expected, initially expected. And you can see that the average duration to generate this inventory basically remained the same. So something definitely happened. So we have to find out what happened there. So we see that there are the rules that are being executed remains the same. We don't see any errors in the compute in the calculation of the rules. So there is as there is the, has the expected format and etc. So we have to go down. And if I refer back to the our architecture, we use uh, local shared in memory cache radius, which is provided by PCF marketplace. So we we try to measure how much time we need to compute on a max. So this is not an average. These are the peaks, the maximums, uh, to fetch a data from Redis. So you can see that basically the patterns remains the same, and the number of requests due to in here after the after the deployment. As I said, we 
switch from sequential to parallel processing. So these peaks are what we expect to see. This is how the service would, the, the pattern of the service will change. We would introduce a peak just because we condensed a lot. We, kn- we know that uh, due to our persistent story is a little bit far away from our data center, we, ha- we had to pay the network latency price. And this is why we switch from sequential to parallel processing. And these peaks are expected. This is exactly what we intend to see. But still, the end goal is not achieved. So let's see what is happening with our persistent store read latency. And from Thursday, you can see that if the time was to reply with about maybe 100 milliseconds on a request, maybe 200 milliseconds on a request, suddenly this jumped a lot and the service behavior changed. So suddenly what we did is that we overloaded our store with the request and the time to Did we lose you? We ha- are you still there? Okay. Uh, I hope you uh, got the best of the presentation from Christo. Christo, thank you very much to you and your team. I'm going to switch back to the slides. And um, this is time for your, your questions. Let us see if... And uh, there is some questions. So um, now here's the one. Um, what are key PCF metrics developers should monitor? Um, it would be a good question for Christo, but Christo is not here. Pontus, do you want to take on this one? Sure, I can take that one. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, the, the answer is that it kind of depends, right? Uh, but uh, typically, you want to monitor things like uh, probably things that are t- typical to uh, constellation delays in your applications, like databases, like data stores, like things like that. But there's really no one formula for what the developer needs to monitor. And that is kind of where, again, Wavefront comes in with its wide ecosystem of what we can look at and its depth of, of things that we can look at, right? So... I would say that that question you just asked, it kind of depends on, on what the context is, and you need a tool that can kind of adapt to that. So that's that's my answer to that. Uh, Risto could probably go into much more kind of, uh, you know, concrete examples, but... So I hope it looks like that uh, Risto dropped uh, from the phone line. If he returns, and when he returns, we're going to ask for his point of view. And let me check... I'm back. Oh. Sorry. Oh, really? yeah, my phone dropped so, because I, I passed one hour barrier. <laughs> okay, but I'm back here. Thank you. Uh, okay, can you can you share your point of view? Uh, what are key PCF metrics uh, developers should monitor? Um, definitely, you should monitor your CPU utilization, memory utilization, and number of instances. So you want to know when an instance crashes and restarts. So this is some kind of an indicator for a developer that something doesn't work as expected. Of course, a lot of the metrics are specific to the business logic you you uh, implement or the functionality you implement and need some. Um, you have to in- instrument them by yourself. Definitely metrics that are emitted or sent by services available for the marketplace like Redis, like Rabbit would give a lot of insights on how you use those services and do you need to introduce new Redis just because or new Rabbit or any service because you overutilize that and you need to spawn a new instance. So these are really valuable uh, addition that comes directly from PCF. But of course, you should follow your business logic. That's, that's the key to your success. In a microservice architecture, request latency is sent, all of that for sure is a must. Thank you, Hista. And um, um, there's another question. Uh, what is the difference between PCF uh, health, ma- uh, health Watch and PCF monitoring with Wavefront? I think, Pontus, you have addressed that in your live demo, but if you want to. I kind of sort of did, right? I mean, uh, um, so Health Watch is a great tool, right? Uh, it, uh, it does allow you to go into a... Uh, a foundation in PCF and look at metrics and look at correlate that with logs and all kinds of things. Uh, the thing that it doesn't do, it doesn't really go outside of PCF. It doesn't really 
co- let you correlate between foundations. It doesn't let you correlate with maybe databases that run outside, maybe uh, you know things like your your uh, traces and histograms and things like that, right? So it's a very good point tool. But unfortunately, or fortunately, <laughs> depending on how you want to see it, your application does not just run inside a single uh, PCF environment. It, uh, I'm sure it talks to other things. I'm sure it talk, may talk to external databases, external web services. It may talk to IoT devices that are spread all over the world, right? That's when you need to kind of reach outside of that. Also, sometimes you need to reach lower, meaning that you've got to go through all the layers down all the way into the infrastructure which is something that, that Wavefront helps you with. So it, I wouldn't see it as a replacement for HealthWatch. It's, it's, uh, it's a complement. And actually, HealthWatch does a lot of great things that we can use, like it does the canary deployments and tests CLI commands, what have you, right? And we suck that data in, and we use it for dashboard stuff. They work really nicely together. Thank you. Uh, we have only two minutes left, and um, I might go, but briefly, one more question. And um, there's a question, how is this different from PC mathematics? So briefly, in like 20 seconds, Kamala, do you want to take this or Pontus? I, I'll, I'll take it, actually. Um, so PCF metrics, there's a lot of questions on like uh, PCF components here. So PCF metrics is actually included as part of the PCF description. And, and uh, for, for a lot of people, it's probably the logical first step to try when they're in, in dev environments and things like that. Um, and this is part of like the observability, built-in observability uh, packaging that customers out. But, but note that this, you know, in, um, large-scale production environments this is not a true dimensional metric store. It covers only some of the use cases, maybe not all of them. And I think Pontus already pointed out one of them, which is like you want to be able to look at information from things that are running outside of the platform as well. Uh, so it's actually uh, good to have uh, additional tooling and that is when your environment has reached a certain maturity, like you would need a full-featured metrics and APM solution to be successful. Thank you, Kamala. And uh, we have just 10 uh, seconds left, so I just want to remind you that uh, you can take advantage and uh, schedule a 30-minute call with Wavefront to discuss your PCF use case. You can talk with Pontus or one of our uh, Wavefront team. And uh, there is some links here for additional resources, and you can always start your free PCF and Wavefront uh, trial. So before saying goodbye, uh, Kamala Christopontus and I, along with the whole Wavefront team, want to thank you for your time and uh, attending this webinar, and we are looking forward to hearing from you. And thanks to the VMware team for having us.